welcome, welcome, welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. How many different states of matter can you find across the universe? Based on conventional day-to-day -day experience, one might say there are three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. These forms, or phases, need no introduction for the sophisticated vanadium audience. Examples of each are within just a turn of the head. But what other forms of matter could there be besides those three? If there are indeed five states of matter, it's hard to imagine two more distinct ways of containing physical mass. The fourth state, plasma, has physical properties very similar to those of gases. Plasma is in many ways just extremely hot gas. However, there's a fascinating difference. When a gas gets to a high enough temperature to achieve a plasma state, the electrons in the atoms are so excited that they become disconnected from the atomic nuclei and they form a kind of glowing electron soup. It's this peculiar electrical property of plasma that gives it the striking glow, making up the visible part of the aurora borealis and even finding its way into lighting consumer television sets and other electronics. Plasma is actually the most abundant form of matter across the universe. There's a lot of hot gas in the billions and billions of star systems out there. Plasma's delocalized electrons grant it abilities and startling properties beyond those of traditional gases, for sure. Perhaps plasma does even deserve its own separate fourth state of matter. However, the fifth state the subject of this episode deserves more than its own category. This fifth form of matter challenges the fundamental idea of substance itself. Bose-Einstein condensates, BECs, are very different from solids, liquids, and gases. BECs are supercooled clusters of different types of particles, typically helium and rubidium atoms. These condensates are so cold, chilled to within a fraction of a degree Kelvin of absolute zero, that funny things begin to happen. With cooling, or removal of energy from the system, the particle motion slows to a crawl, then to a stillness. The atoms making up the material start to lose their distinction from one another. Hundreds to thousands of different individual atoms start to behave as one entity. And this one entity is less like a solid and more like a photon of light. So what started off as a lump of matter becomes something like a ray of light at sufficiently cold temperatures. What makes a particle of matter different from a particle of light? They do behave in similar ways and interact with the environment in an almost identical way. What makes particles of light different from particles of matter is that separate bits of matter, from the grand to the gram, down to the atom, each needs its own volume of space. Light is different. Light particles, or bosons as physicists call them, and other waves can move past one another, superimpose without impact or energy loss. Atoms, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Physicists refer to these particles as fermions, the stuff of matter, can't behave that way. This stuff needs its own space to be. Solids move independently and impact one another. That's foundation to the idea of particles and objects. One of the things that makes BECs so interesting and confusing is that they challenge this idea. Collections of helium and rubidium atoms in Bose-Einstein condensates get so cold that they go full wave. The fermions become bosons. For BECs, this has been demonstrated in the classic quantum mechanics double slit experiment, showing that condensate clusters of particles can pass through two slits simultaneously, forming an interference pattern and behaving as waves of light do, demonstrating wave-particle duality with these clusters. There are even examples that you can see macroscopically with just the naked eye that startle the imagination. No scientific instruments required. Superfluid helium is a Bose-Einstein condensate with many unusual properties, including zero viscosity, or the ability to flow without dissipating energy. In this special ultra-cold liquid state, the helium can form a film against the wall of the container and just walk right out of the vessel, 
At a cold enough temperature, the liquid empties itself from the container. In this superfluid state, liquids can escape through pores normally too small. The liquid helium passes through ultra-tiny pores due to collective effort and coordinated motion of the atoms. Just a few degrees warmer, and this barrier would be impervious. These superfluids have also shown the existence of quantized vortices. These are whirlpools that can be created in the surface of superfluids that persist forever, with no loss of energy or diminishment of strength. They can form striking geometries and eerie patterns. The first validated demonstration of a Bose-Einstein condensate was created by Eric Cornell and Carl Wyman at the Joint Institute for Laboratory Astrophysics, located on the University of Colorado Boulder campus. The Boulder team cooled the dilute vapor of approximately 2,000 rubidium atoms to below 170 nanokelvin using laser cooling. This technique won its inventors, including Stephen Chu, the 1997 Nobel Prize in Physics. And Stephen Chu actually went on to become Barack Obama's Secretary of Energy in 2009. The idea for Bose-Einstein condensates, the notion that such an exotic state of matter could exist, was first proposed by Santanyendra Bose, a mathematician and physicist specializing in theoretical physics. He was an accomplished polymath with a wide range of interests in varied fields, including physics, chemistry, biology, literature, and music. And he wrote a letter to Albert Einstein about this, and they formed a collaboration and came up with a theory together. This figure from the University of Colorado study shows the onset of condensation. Notice the change in velocity distribution. The group of particles start off with a distribution of velocities, like one would expect, some particles in the group moving faster than others. Then, immediately after condensation, the group is suddenly moving and behaving like a single particle. A supersolid, BEC, is a special quantum state of matter where the particles form a rigid, spatially ordered structure, but also flow with zero viscosity, through pores and around obstacles, but while maintaining the rigidity and structure. The particles in this supersolid and in the superfluid state are no longer independently perturbable, and they can only move or be excited as one entity. The way we see the world in conventional life is really just a small subset of the full picture. Things are much stranger than they seem at first glance. Even what would seem like the most basic assumption should be made only after very careful consideration. Who would have thought the physical laws of matter could change so much by just getting things cold? Reality gets slippery. Even solid objects can slip right through the fingers. Thank you very much. This is Chris Rankin with Vanadium.